Well, that was a good chapter, chapter one, but I meant to say chapter three. It's my fault. So turn to chapter three now that we've read chapter one. But that was a good chapter. Keep, so keep your place there in chapter three of one Peter. We're going to be there in just a minute, but if you could turn to Psalm 34. Let's turn to Psalm 34. Now, a couple of weeks ago, or a few weeks ago, now it's hard to keep track with the lockdown, but Brother Sam preached a sermon about asking good questions. So my sermon title tonight is a good question, and we're going to look at how to answer this good question. The question is, how to live a long and good life? I think that's a good question to ask, and God has the answers. And we all should be asking this question, especially if you're a young person. Like if you're a young person and you've got all your life ahead of you, well, you should be asking God, how can I live a long and good life? Because God's the one that's given you this life. And we should be seeking God how to then live a long and satisfying, prosperous life that's going to be a blessing to us. But most young people, they don't think about their life and how to live a long life. They're just thinking the next few months or few years in front of them but look they need to be thinking about how can i live a long and good life and that's what we're going to be looking at uh this this afternoon tonight so you're there in psalm 34 and verse 12 now pastor kevin recently preached on this psalm and while he was preaching i got this idea for the sermon tonight so that was good so psalm 34 verse 12 it says what man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good. So the psalmist is saying, well, who is the man that's going to love many days and see good? So it's not just about trying to live for a long time. You also want to live a long time, but have a a good life, have a high quality life. Like you don't want to live to be 90, but then the last few decades, like you're a cripple in bed, in hospital, got all these ailments. We don't want to have that sort of life. We want to have a long life, but also a good life. And God gives us the answers of how we can do that. But look, I do understand that sometimes things happen out of our control. Like, like, like Stephen in the Bible, he didn't get to be an old man and live a long life because he got martyred. So sometimes things like that can happen or we don't have control over a lot of diseases that will come upon us. Like Elijah, the prophet, he actually died of a, of a sickness and he may not have got to live to be a super old man. Like he died of some sickness. So sometimes things do happen out of our control. So I'm not just saying that uh, things don't, bad things don't happen to good people. So other than those sort of things, we should be believing God to live a long and happy and blessed and good life. And the psalmist gives us some points here on how we can start to do that. Verse 13 says, Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. So if you want to live a long life and see many days, we ought to be keeping the commandments of God, living a righteous life. And we're going to talk more about that later in the sermon. But it says there, and seek peace. So we ought to be seeking to have peace. But first of all, peace with God. We want to have peace with God. So if you don't have peace with God, I'm talking about salvation. You don't want to be God's enemy. You want to have, have peace with God. So there's no point living to be 90 or 100 and then dying and go to hell. It's all for nothing. So we want to get peace with God. And then you've got everlasting life. You've got eternal life. Talk about a long and good life. You want, then you've got everlasting life. So we should make sure we've got everlasting life. And that's totally up to God. Like God does all that side of things. We just receive it by faith and we have everlasting life. But then living a long and good life, that has a lot to do with us. We have a big part to play in how well we're going to live in this, in this world. And God gives us many things that we ought to be looking at doing to live that long and good life. Well, again, salvation, all done by God. He's going to give us eternal life. That's the long life we, we need to get. But then it's up to us to make some good decisions and live by faith and, and serve God. And Peter actually quotes his verse in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, if you can turn there. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. And he quotes his verse and he says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. So this is something that's on Peter's radar. This is something that's important to Peter that he actually quotes this verse about living a long life. 
And Peter was someone who knew he would live a long life. Remember, Jesus said to him, when you are old, someone else will stretch out your arms and gird you and carry you where you would not want to go. Words to that effect. So he knew he was going to be old one day. So maybe he'd been studying this out. How can I live a good life when I'm old? And he quotes this verse here because it's something that we ought to remember, ought to think about as well. So if you can now turn to Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14. While you're turning there, let me read to you some some verses. Psalm 36 verse 9 says, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. Talking about God. Like the world's looking for the fountain of youth. But the real fountain of youth is, is God who's a fountain of life. So when we're seeking after the Lord, we're going to find life in the Lord, not in the world or any, 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 anywhere else, but it's going to be only in the Lord. In, in thee is the fountain of life. And then Genesis 15 and verse 15, chapter 15, verse 15 says, And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Well, that's a promise to Abraham. And God promises that he'll, he'll, he'll live to be uh, buried in a good old age. And look, the Bible says that we're partakers with the promises of Abraham. So why not apply that to yourself, that you also can live to be uh, a good old age? Not what, It doesn't say a bad old age or just old age, but a good old age. So when you do reach old age, it's good. It's a good time. It's a good experience for you. It's satisfying. It's not like you're, you've got all these ailments uh, afflicting you so you can't enjoy life but a good life a good old age is what we're talking about and proverbs chapter 9 and verse 11 speaking of wisdom says for by me that's wisdom thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased so if we can get wisdom which is going to be my first point tonight our days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased now you're there in Joshua chapter 14. Have a look at verse 7. He's a great example of a man who lived to be an old age, but it was a good old age for him. And this is Caleb talking. 40 years old was I. Have we got any 40-year-olds in, in the... Uh, yeah, the brother Sam over there, me. and There's a, there's a few there. So I think the best decade is, is your 40s. If you're not 40 yet, like it starts in, life starts when you, get, when you hit 40s. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But have a look at this. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Jacob saying these other guys, look, they had a bad report, but I, I followed wholly after the Lord. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. There's many rewards in life for following God with your whole heart. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and though, and now, though I am this day four score and five years old, which is 85. He's 85 years old now. And have a look at verse 11. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. For war, both to go out and to come in. Like, he's got the right attitude. Like, you speak to a lot of old people, and they're like, oh, I've got arthritis, I've got this problem. Oh, when I was younger, I used to do this, but now I just, I don't get out much now. I've got this walking stick, but not Caleb. Caleb's saying, I'm as strong now as I was when I was 40. And that's how we need to be. Look, whether or not that was really the case, look, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Like being an 85-year-old, an he's probably not as strong as, as he was when he was 40. But look, that's how he felt. That's the attitude he had. And when we're 85, look, God willing, we'll be like Caleb and we'll say, look, I'm as strong now as I was when I was 40. Let's go soul winning. Let's just get to work. Let's just serve the Lord. And that's how we have to be. And if we live a long and good life by God's principles in the word of God, look, 
That, that, can, that can be the case. That can be your case. You don't need to be old and sick in bed and, and suffering all these ailments. If you serve God, and I've got five points I want to go through, and a bonus point if we have time, if we do these things in the Word of God, we can be like Caleb. We can live a long and good life. And the first thing we need to do, if you want to be like Caleb when we're 85, is seek after wisdom. The first point is seek after wisdom. If you can turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. So if we can just get wisdom in our lives, many other things are just going to automatically just fall into place. And that's going to be also, that's going to include put, uh, living a, a life with wisdom that's going to then help you to live a long life and enjoy that life into old age. Right? Wisdom will give you the guidance on how to do that. And, if, and let me just read to you from James chapter 1, verse 5, a famous uh, passage of scripture here about how to get wisdom. And if any man, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So we can get this wisdom by just asking God for it, who gives it liberally, like not just in small amounts, but if you ask God in faith, he's going to give you a liberal amount, a generous amount of wisdom. And wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is going to guide you and help you to make great decisions in life and cause you to actually make the right choices and the decisions now that when you are 85 and 90 and 95, you're going to be living still a satisfied, fruitful life. And 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 12 have a look at this story here about Solomon. And this is after Solomon's uh, asked God for wisdom and God's given him that wisdom and says, Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou have not asked both riches and honour, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And now he gives him a great promise. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did, then I will lengthen thy days. So he gets this promise of a long life. He didn't ask for a long life, but now God's saying, look, I'm going to give you a long life if you just keep my commandments. Remember Psalm 34 and 1 Peter chapter 3 talked about eschewing evil and seeking peace, seeking after the Lord. So it's the same thing here. If we keep God's commandments, we have this great promise of our days being lengthened. And it's going to be one of my points later as well. And if we have wisdom, then we're going to be living according to the word of God. Proverbs chapter 3, if you can turn there. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 13. Let's continue to look at wisdom. It says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that those canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Look, is that how you look at wisdom? Like wisdom is so much better than all the gold and silver in the world. Wisdom is better. I think about it, and we have wisdom. This book is just full of wisdom. You know, how, how much do you read this book? I just imagine someone said to you, look, I'm going to give you a million dollars if you can read this novel today. Like most of us would be like, look, I guess I'm going to be reading a novel today because we want to get this million dollars. But this Bible, the Word of God, it's better. It's got something better than riches, better than silver and gold, yet we hardly ever read it. Yet what's in it is better than a million dollars. And that's how we need to look at wisdom. If we could look at wisdom like that, then we're going to be seeking after wisdom and God's going to give us a liberal amount of wisdom. Let's get reading. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honour. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is every one that retaineth her. So I think we need to get ourselves some, some wisdom. Get ourselves some wisdom. Proverbs chapter 16 
verse 22. Proverbs 16 and verse 22 says, Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that have it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Look, if we want to live to be old and enjoy life, we need to have healthy bones. And the Bible says here that pleasant words and are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Like even reading the wisdom in the word of God, it's going to strengthen your physical bones. It's going to do you good, do your physical health good. Just reading the, the God's word is powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's going to give health to your bones. That's what the Bible says. Why not believe that? Another flow-on effect of having wisdom and getting wisdom in your life is that you're going to fear God. Like if I see someone who doesn't fear God, then I know they, they don't yet have wisdom. And let me read to you Proverbs 10 and verse 27 says, The fear of the Lord prolongeth life, a prolongeth days, sorry, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. So if we can get the fear of God in our hearts, it's going to prolong our days as well. And then we read to you Psalm 128 verse 1 says, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. And then if you drop down to verse 6, it talks about uh, a long life. It says, Yea, then shalt thou see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. All because they fear God. That's a promise. If you fear God, God promises you can then see your children's children and, and peace upon Israel. So many promises from fearing God, having wisdom of, of long life. That's my first point was, Fearing, uh, having wisdom and fearing God is going to help you live a long life and ha a good life. Not just a long life, but a good life. And the second point is that we need to love God. We need to love God. If you could turn to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. Psalm 91 verse 14 says, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. And verse 16, here's a great promise. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. So if we love God, God promises, I'm going to give you a long life to satisfy you. Not to punish you because you're sick and you're a cripple and you, and you can't live life, but a life that's going to be satisfying. And that's what we're talking about, a long and good life, a long and satisfying life. So we, can, we ought not to fear getting old. If you have God's promises, you have God's wisdom, you love God, you, can, you should expect to live a long, good life and a satisfying life where you're going to be satisfied, you're going to be content, you're going to be happy and you're going to be blessed in old age. That can be yours. That's what God promises. We want to be living this long and good life. So don't expect to have all these problems with arthritis and high blood pressure and and cholesterol problems, you don't have to suffer those things. You can be satisfied in, in old, old age. And we're going to look at some more points too, which is going to help us to, to achieve that with God's help. So some people live a long life, but it's far from satisfying. Look, it looks like Caleb in the Bible lived a long, satisfying life. He's ready to take that mountain. He's ready to go back into battle at age 85. He was, he was very fruitful and powerful in old age. Now turn to Matthew chapter 22. So we don't have to grow old and suffer. We can grow old and be satisfied. And loving God is actually a commandment. Like God wants us so much to have this long life and satisfying life by loving him that he, then he commands us to love him. It's a great commandment. Jesus said unto them, this is Matthew 22 verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So God commands us to love him with our, our whole hearts. And look, when, when God commands us to do something, we know it's for our good. 
And if we've already seen here, if we love God, then we're going to live that long and satisfying life. So when we see God commanding us to do something, we can have full confidence that we should do it as for our good. Like compared to other people or governments that might command us to do things, like the government might command us to, to wear masks. And we might be thinking, well, does the government really love me? Look, I'm not sure. But when God says, I command you to love me with my whole heart, we already know, yeah, God loves us. Like we, we ought to keep his commandments. Or when the government commands us to go into lockdowns, we're like, well, is this really the best thing for, my, for, for me, for my mental health, for the economy? Look, I don't know if the government really loves us, but because we're not, I'm not saying that we, we disobey the government, we need to uh, uh, obey the, the higher powers as they obey God. As long as they're not going against the word of God, we need to toe the line. Um, but look, when God commands us to do something, we can have full confidence. When the government says, do this, do that, well, we ought to do it as long as it's not going against God's uh, word. But then we can also be, be like, well, I don't know, this is really the best thing for me to be doing, wearing this mask and, and going to lockdown. But, but when God commands us, it's good, we can obey God. And Jesus also said in John 14 and verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. We ought to keep his commandments. The second point there was we ought to love God. First point was have wisdom and we have these two things, then we're going to be able to live a long life and, and a good life. And the third point is we need to obey God. We need to obey God. If you can turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. So we're keeping the commandments. It's going to lengthen our days and give us peace. And Deuteronomy chapter 4, if you can turn there. So when God commands us, to keep his commandments, he's saying uh, we need to obey him. We need to obey his commandments. But the thing is, with God's commandments, when we obey God's commandments, there's other things like bundled in with those commandments. Like you may, on the outside, it may look like, oh, there's all these laws and things I have to keep. I've got to try and, and love God with all my heart. How can I do that? But when you start doing that, then you start to see that the bundle becomes unraveled and other things included in that package with keeping God's commandments and obeying God, like, like long life, like a satisfying life and peace. So when God commands us to do certain things, we do it in faith and then we start to see all these other benefits and blessings which come as well. And Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 40, it says, Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes, and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. So if we keep God's commandments, he's promising to prolong our days in the earth, and we ought to be doing that. Now what I want to do now is, is look at some specific things in the Bible which we need to do in, as far as obeying God, certain things we need to obey God in. And the first one is we need to conduct ourselves with integrity in this world. So I found a few verses which are specifically linked to living a long life. There's certain things we need to obey God in if we want to have a long life. And the first one is, is just the way we conduct ourselves in the world. So if you can turn to Ephesians chapter 6, I'll just read to you from Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 15 which says, But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have, that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So this speaks to me about just conducting yourself in the world, in your workplace, whatever you, you may be doing with yourself during the day, with integrity, with a just weight. You're not being deceptive. You're not cutting corners in your workplace. You're not trying to deceive the boss and get out of work, but you're having integrity in the workplace. And God says in that chapter that he'll prolong your, your days in the land. So let's make sure we have integrity in the workplace, honesty in the workplace, and the way we conduct ourselves in the world. And we're promised to be uh, given a long life. 
And then the second point here of this sub point is we need to honour our parents. And Ephesians 6 verse 1 says, famous verse here, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honour thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. So here's a promise that as soon as you're born and you can start to comprehend things and understand things, you can then start to put long life in, in, in the bank, so to speak. You can start to work towards having a long life by honouring your parents. And it's something what we all can do. We, call, we all can honour our parents and we have the promise of long life. So let's be careful, children, how you, how you speak about your parents. Uh, don't disrespect your parents and honour by your parents and then you can have this promise that you can hold on to that you will live a long life. And I want to read to you from Proverbs 23. If you could turn to Psalm 92, I'll read to you from Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 22 it says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. So that good verse say, it's not just when you're young you need to obey your parents, and, but when you're old you don't necessarily have to uh, obey them, but you still need to honour your parents. Even when your parents are old, when your mother is old, don't despise her. We need to be looking after our elderly parents. So when I'm old, girls, you need to look after your dad. Okay, don't despise your dad when he's old. Put him in the granny flat in the backyard with your family and look after your dad. But we, seriously though, you make sure you don't despise your parents. Make sure you think about your parents when, you're, when they're old and look after them. They shouldn't have to go into a retirement home and have the government look after them. You should look after them. And this, that's how we can honour our parents and also make sure we can have a long life as well. So you're there in Psalm 92. And another thing we, can, we have to obey God in if you want to have a long life. The first one was... We need to conduct a source of integrity. The second one was that we need to honour our parents. And the third one is we should stay in church. We should stay in church. Okay, so Psalm 92 verse 12 says, The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. That's how we want to be in, in old age. Spiritually speaking, fat and flourishing in, in old age and bearing fruit. And if we say in church, we have the promise that we can do that. Look, it's going to be hard enough when you're 80 and 90 and 70, whatever, to still be out there soul winning and being fruitful by yourself. But if you're in church and you're around other, but we'll, if we all say in church, there'll be a bunch of 80 year olds in church like a bunch of 40-year-olds here now, but 40 years' time, we'll all still be together, hopefully, God willing, going soul winning as 85-year-olds, 90-year-olds, and bearing fruit in old age, because we're staying in the house of God, we're staying planted in the house of the Lord, but as well as being old folks, I'm sure there's going to be tons of young people as well, so it won't be just one of those grey-headed churches, I'm sure. And this leads me to my, my next point, point number four, about how to live a long and good life is we need to make sure that we stay profitable to God in old age. Make sure we stay profitable to God. Now turn to Philippians chapter 1. So in Psalm 92 verse 14 it says, They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. So there's these people that David's Prophesying, prophesying about or talking about, they're old, but they're still producing fruit. They're still profitable for the Lord to keep around. And the Apostle Paul is a great example of someone who was very profitable for God to keep him around. Like many, many times God saved him. As soon as he got saved and he started preaching, like people wanted to kill him. And he could have easily have been killed then, but God knew that he's going to be profitable to keep Paul around. And Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21 and we get a bit of an insight into how Paul feels about things. It says here, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Like That's the, the blessing we have as believers. Like It's always better to die and, and be with the Lord. Okay, But if I live on in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labour. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. 
Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. So it was, uh, it was profitable for God to keep Paul around because he was a blessing to other people. He is actually able to uh, encourage other people in the faith. So God miraculously protected him, saved him. Like one time he was stoned to death. It looks like he was actually dead. And then the apostles, the, the disciples came around and he ra- God raised him back up again because God wanted to keep him around because he's profitable. He's a blessing to the people. And if we can make sure that we're going to be profitable to God, he'll keep us around and give us a long and good life and continue to build rewards for heaven. Now turn to Acts chapter 21. So we should decide that we're going to be a lifelong soul winner. We're going to be a lifelong person that's going to be fruitful to God but not just fruitful in soul winning, but fruitful in being a blessing to the brethren. Have a look at Acts 21 and verse 15. We have a great verse here. It says, After those days we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem, and there went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea and brought with them one Manasin of Cyprus, an old disciple with whom we should lodge. So here is a disciple who's old. The Bible calls him old, yet they were going to lodge with him. So he's actually being a blessing to the disciples by allowing them to lodge with him. So you're not, you might not be able to go soul winning like you used to when you're 90 years old and, and do a lot of works, but you can still be a blessing to the brethren. Like this old disciple, he was a blessing. Like God kept him around so he could be a blessing to the disciples and lodge and uh, be a blessing to them in Acts chapter 21. So there's many ways that you can be a blessing to the brethren. And if you do these things, like God will keep you around. If there's a need for you to be here, well, God will keep you here just like he kept Paul and, and supernaturally protect you and maintain you and keep you healthy and keep you satisfied with life. But there's also a warning. Let me read to you from Matthew 7, verse 19. Here's a warning for not being fruitful. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So this makes sure that you're going to be still producing fruit, still useful for the Lord. Otherwise, you might just say, look, you're just taking up space. You may as well come home and receive your reward. And if that happens, so just imagine if you you died before your time, you get to heaven and Jesus is like, you're about 20 years too early. What are you doing here now? I've got much more work for you to do, but... I'm just sort of joking a bit. But you want to make sure you live the full allotment of your days that God has for you. And if you're going to be fruitful, God's going to keep you around and you're going to be a blessing and you won't get an earlier mark to heaven. Okay. And the last point I have for you, the first point, let me just go over those five points again, the first four points, is that if you want to live a long and good life, let's make sure we have wisdom, let's make sure we love God and obey God and be profitable, but also... Let's make sure that we have a healthy lifestyle. Like it's no good just praying and being spiritual and obeying God. You're just destroying your body through how you you conduct your lifestyle. Like you don't want to be expecting God's going to bless you and give you a long life, yet at the same time you're not looking after your temple. Okay, so have a look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, if you can turn there. And so many of us can let ourselves down by how we take care of our body, how we take care of our temple. So 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8, you're going to know this one, it says, For bodily exercise profiteth little. So to exercise profits a little bit. But... Godliness is profitable unto all things, including living to be old, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. So the main thing is living a godly life, a God-fearing life, keeping the commandments of God, living according to the word of God. And we have a great promise of a great life now, a long life now, but also in that which is to come. But that doesn't mean we discount exercise. So physical exercise does profit a little. So we should try and maintain Um, Some sort of level of exercise. That's all I'm going to say about exercise. Now turn to Exodus chapter 23. See, only profits a little, so I'm not going to park it there and spend 20 minutes talking about exercise. So turn to Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25. 
So what's the other big thing we need to do in our lifestyle to be healthy? There's exercise and anyone guess what the next one's going to be? Yes, how we eat. So I will talk about that just a little bit because it's important as well, okay? Exodus chapter 23 and verse 25. Turn to verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless thy bread and thy water and I will take away sickness, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. So here's a great promise from God that he's going to take sickness away. And I believe there's a practical application for this, but also there's a spiritual, supernatural application as well. And I just want to state, if you can turn to Psalm 91, let's just look at the spiritual application of this verse, God's, God's promise to take sickness away from us. And then we'll look at the physical application. So Psalm 91, a great chapter in Psalms, a great chapter in the Bible. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And then there's lists certain blessings, excuse me, and certain promises that come with doing that. And just jump down now, excuse me, to verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right side, but it shall not come near thee. Here's a great promise that God's going to protect us in a pestilence. Look, if there really, if there really does happen, if a real pandemic does happen, where people are actually dropping dead around us, where we just realise, well, this, this family member's dead now, my friend's so-and-so at work has died, like a real pandemic that starts to happen. That does happen. We have this promise from God that he's going to protect us. He's going to keep it away from us. And we need to believe these promises of God. So there is that spiritual application for that promise in Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. So I don't want to take away from that. But there's also that spiritual, uh, or that physical application as well. Let me read to you again, Exodus 23, 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take away sickness from the midst of thee. So God said, we need to eat some food that God's going to be pleased to bless, is what I'm trying to say. And, and he says, look, I'll take sickness away from you. Okay, so there's certain sicknesses and diseases we will get, or likely to get, if you eat bad food. Or if you cut out certain foods, and eat certain healthy foods, you're going to have a good chance of not getting certain diseases in old age. Okay, and these, and these are things that we need to be mindful of. And if we eat well, then we're going to be going a long way to having these diseases not, not come our way in old, in old age. So turn to Genesis chapter 1. So we do need to look after our temple as far as exercising and what we put in. We don't want to just ask God to live to be 90 and live a good life, but then at the same time, we're tempting God by just eating uh, bad food and not looking after our, our temple. And look, we're all guilty of this. We're all, we're all challenged with this. We live in a, in a world that, that's not so conducive towards eating a good diet and exercising a lot. Except in lockdown, you've got a good excuse to go out and do some exercise. And so what we should be eating, what we should be focusing on, is the bread and food and water that God provides, not Ronald McDonald provides or the Colonel provides. We need to eat food that God provides. And look, I'm, I'm guilty of this as well, okay? And Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, it says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So God says, I have given you these trees and herbs for meat, for food. He didn't say, look, I have given you some fast food chains. I've given you some processed foods. I've given you some GMO foods. No, I have given you some trees and some herbs. Look, I'm preaching to myself too. I had Maccas for the first time yesterday in a long time. So I'm just preaching what the Word of God says. Okay, so we all can be a bit hypocritical at times, but still we want to preach what the Word of God says. And God has given us foods. So we should eat the foods that God has given us, whole foods, proper foods. 
And this, does that mean we have to be vegetarians? Does that mean we, we can't have our, our meat? Now, of course, in Genesis 9, verse 3, I read to you, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. So God's given us all these animals to eat. So there you go. You can, you can eat your lamb brains. It's all, all good. It's all organic, natural foods that, that God's provided. Okay, so we want to try and eat as much as we can. Focus on eating organic, whole foods that God's provided. Okay, and God can bless our bread and water if we do that. Now let's look at some examples of of eating good meals in the Bible. So turn to Genesis chapter 18. I got this one from Brother Sam's sermon as well. Genesis, I think it was Brother Sam. Genesis chapter 18 verse 5. Here we see a good meal being prepared. And this is when the angels came to, to see Abraham before they went and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 18 verse 5 says... And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do, as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth, or the half. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a tender a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hasted, hasted to dress it and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat so he's getting some butter some milk a calf all good natural wholesome things like butter is not your enemy it's a good natural fat which our body needs and some good i bet you that was some pretty gnarly milk there with the cream on top great great organic natural milk and the calf that would have been a great meal like no didn't say to sarah quick chop in the car sarah i need you to duck down the kfc get a like a, a mega fish bucket and come back and we're going to feed these angels no he ran down into the paddock i'm sorry if you, oh, we're having fish tonight aren't we so fish is good like jesus fed his disciples fish and multiplied the fish and fed the 5,000 and the 7,000. So it's very biblical we're having fish tonight. It's good. So I wanted to spoil your, your takeaway. And I guess everything in, everything in moderation. But this is some good, some good principles from the Bible if you want to look after your temple into old age. Now turn to Ezekiel chapter 4. Now we're going to look at the greatest dietitian that's ever been. Ever. The greatest dietitian ever. And we're going to get a recipe from God on how to make bread. So turn to Ezekiel chapter 4 and verse 9. We're just about, just about done. Ezekiel chapter 4 and verse 9. So this is when Ezekiel needs to lie down on his side for um, 390 days. And God gave him a recipe for some bread to eat while he's doing that. We can get some great principles from, from these verses. So Ephesians 4 verse 9, uh, Ezekiel, sorry, 4 verse 9. Take thou also unto thee wheat. Now I think the wheat that we had in, in the Bible times are probably different to the wheat we have today. Yeah, so my research has found that the wheat today is not the quality that it was back then. Okay, so I don't recommend that you go and eat a lot of wheat now unless you can get some really good Bible wheat. <laughs> Take thou also unto thee wheat and barley and beans, this is God speaking actually, uh, and lentils and millet and fitches. Now these are just all lots of different types of, of grains to my understanding. And put them in one vessel and make thee bread thereof according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon thy side. Three hundred and ninety days shalt thou eat thereof. Let's keep going. And thy meat which thou shalt eat shall be by weight. Twenty shekels a day from time to time shalt thou eat it. Some great things in there. Says, so we get this recipe from God how to make bread. And it's a pretty wholesome loaf of bread, a lot of grains and healthy things in there. But there's one thing that's missing in this recipe that we see in all breads these days is, is sugar. There's no sugar being added to, to that recipe by God. Now, the Bible never mentions sugar. 
Like if you do a search, a word search, there's no mention of sugar. But there is one food in the Bible which is like super sugary, which we can then look at and then get some understanding about sugar. What do you think I'm talking about? Honey. So who said honey? Brother Michael. So honey, exactly. Let me read to you from Proverbs 25, verse 27. It is not good to eat much honey. So it's not good to eat much honey. So you could say, it's not good to eat much sugar. And God doesn't add any honey and sugar to this loaf of bread. Like everything in your body that you don't want to be there feeds on sugar. Sugar's bad. Like cut the sugar out as much as you can. All right? You don't want to be eating a high sugar diet. Now in verse 10 it says, And thy meat, which thou shalt eat, shall be by weight. Twenty shekels a day. Now, 20 shekels is probably about 228 grams. And that's like, I'm not sure, I meant to check the fridge to see what was in the fridge that was about that much. But I think it's about like maybe like a hand size is about 228 grams. And from time to time shalt thou eat it. He's not saying eat it all day. He said from time to time you shall eat of this bread, not constantly, okay, not constantly. And, and it says there that it's, it's only 228 grams. Look, that's, that's not a lot. Look, that's like one meal a day. Like this is intermittent fasting. <laughs> in, in the Bible, like, like he's saying to Ezekiel, look, from time to time, you're going to eat 228 grams a day. And look, that's, that's not a lot. Look, I'm not saying that this is what we should do, but this is a, 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 a specific commandment direction to Ezekiel. Maybe this is some special thing that he had to do. I'm not saying that we can't eat uh, more than one meal or two meals, three meals a day. You have the Christian liberty to eat what you want. But this is a principle here which God gives to Ezekiel and that what, this is what he expected Ezekiel to eat. But they're just 228 grams a day from time to time and had to weigh it out and be specific and not just picking out all day. Okay, so, so here we see some good principles about um, our diet our, our, and exercising and our lifestyle. Let's try and cut down the high sugar foods, just eat less, and it gives our body time just to, to burn off some of those things that we don't need to have and burn off those, those sugars and those high carbs. And, and we can go a long way to have certain diseases removed from our lives that we would come into contact with otherwise. In, in old age, possibly, possibly. Right, I'll, I'll give you my bonus point. It's a good one. It's probably one of my favourite points. Turn to Luke chapter 21. Luke 21, just about done. Another reason why, a reason why we should try and live a long and good life is, is so that we can possibly wait to see the Lord return. And Jesus said, like, this is something you should be praying for and believing for. So Luke 21, verse 36, it says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. So we should be wanting to give ourselves the best shot we have to stand before the Son of Man when these end times come. And if you're healthy and you're functioning well and you're living for a long time, like you may just be around when that happens. And Jesus says we should pray always that we can be there and stand before the Son of Man. And if, and if you're living a long time, there's more chance you're going to be there. Like this is a generation now where it's closer than any other generation. So it could be our generation. It could be 10 years away. It could be 20 years away. Just make sure you live long enough that if it's going to be within your lifespan, that you can, you can stand before the Son of Man and be there. Like it would be, be sad to die of high blood pressure and have a heart attack due to your lifestyle a couple of years before Jesus' return, when you could have been eating less sugar, eating better, and then you can make it stand before the Lord. Either way, it's going to be good when you get to heaven. It's going to be good. Let me close by reading to you from Job 42 and verse 16. After this lived Job a hundred and forty years and saw his sons and his sons' sons even for four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. So we want to die old and full of days and having lived a satisfying, fruitful life if the Lord doesn't come back first. So let's end it there. Let's pray.